Hey guys, I wanted to do a video. I'm sitting here laughing. More of a nervous, can't believe we could be that far off. Mis mismeasurement, you know, whatever. But when we put that 5.3 in this S10, uh, the transmission was not properly uh, secured to the cross member. It was just kind of hanging down. So I knew that the engine would be leveled a little bit and uh, we were trying to get an idea because the hood that was originally on this vehicle had a small unknown type bolt-on hood scoop that I'm assuming came off of something factory at some point and it just cleared the air cleaner. So as long as you didn't have a different intake or some offset air cleaner base you could run, oh, I think I could run up to a three inch filter on a, like a single plane Victor Junior intake and it would just come up through a circle in the hood. Well, after I put the stupid 5.3 in here, I immediately realized, you know, because when you bend down and look fender to fender, the alternator was very much above the hood line. So, uh, this hood, already has a lot of the internal structure removed out of it. Um, I'm not 100% sure why I did that, but I think it had something to do with clearancing the air filter. But I removed a lot of the underneath structure, the internal structure of the hood. So it's a little bit flimsy. I mean, it's not dangerously flimsy, although I will admit I'm, in, I'm considering going to hood pins instead of the factory hood latch. But that's a whole different story. We'll probably cover that when we get to the hood, bolting it on. <clears throat> but here's where I'm at. When we decided, or I decided, I'm going to cut an access hole in the hood so that it'll specifically clear the LS engine with the truck intake and the truck accessory location. So I had you know, just eyeballed it with a straight edge across the fenders and I was like, okay, I'm going to need a minimum of a three inch cow hood, maybe four inch just to be safe because I do plan on running the factory Vortec um, cosmetic cover that goes over the top of the intake, which some people like and some people hate. You know, some people uh, shave their intake and plastic weld it and make it look real pretty. I'm not really worried about how pretty it is because this is a daily driver. This isn't really a show car. This isn't a, you know, go show off to my friends. Oh, look at my pretty intake. It's purely functional. As much as people try to argue with me, it's truly in this point in my life at 48 years old, it's a driver. Yeah, it's got a V8 in it. Yeah, it's got a five speed. But you don't have to drive it like you stole it. But, moving on, uh, really irritated because during the uh, hole cutting process, I managed to scratch the living crap out of it. So, heh, at the very least, until I can get this thing all painted up pretty, I'm probably gonna have to flat black it or hot rod black it or, you know, sand it down and throw something on there to cover up all these stupid scratches. But I wanted you guys to see, once we properly mounted the rear of the T5 on the cross member and shimmed it seven eighths of an inch to try, try I say, we don't know 100% where we're at because the Suspension has to be under load for you to properly measure your pinion angle and your output shaft of your transmission angle so that you can get your equal and opposite angles for smooth operation. So until I can get this thing on the alignment rack or the center rack up at certified cars, I'm not going to be able to get a real accurate me measurement of my angles. But I know from previous experience, that my rear pinion angle is negative six degrees with the uh, wedges, shims that we put in there. And my transmission uh, always had a problem 
trying to get the enough positive ang uh, sorry positive angle to my output shaft to get a real smooth operation because I don't think I've mentioned in previous videos if I haven't in order to get a vibration free operation on your drive shaft your drive shaft angles need to be equal and opposite now because leaf spring cars tend to have more pinion wrap or pinion rise than a like a four link or three link or something that's more solidly mounted you want to try to get equal to that crazy six you know because drag racing uh, leaf springs they tend to tell you to set your pinion between four and seven degrees down then you would go to your transmission and try to shim it to get it four to seven degrees positive so that would make it pretty smooth the problem is because of floorboard clearance and clearance to your firewall it's really hard to get your transmission up that high unless you lower your engine in the in the uh, frame and use a drop cross member and raise it that way so what i've done is just shim it as far as i could to raise the rear of the transmission but maintain enough clearance where it's not going to rub the floor pan i don't want it rubbing the tunnel or anything weird like that because that causes weird vibrations and ugly noises you name it you don't want it so basically once i get this thing done i can take it up to certified put the angle meter on it and find out for sure where am i at am i close to where i want to be so that i get a good smooth operation do i need to take a little bit of shim out because I think previously I had it shimmed maybe between, maybe not more than a half inch. <clears throat> but now that I've moved the engine forward, I've got a lot more room to play with back there. So knock on wood, I'll be able to get those angles perfect this time for a nice smooth operation. Um, just a real quick point of information. In the back on your leaf springs, if you start out at a negative five to a negative seven, when you put your uh, rear suspension under load, like in an acceleration, that pinion is going to rise some. So if you can only get positive three, four, you know, if you can get anything positive on the front end, you should be okay because your pinion is going to rise to less than five to seven degrees negative. If that, if you, I hope you guys can follow that because not everybody's familiar with that uh, concept. But when that pinion rises under load and you know uses the, the leaf springs loads that suspension it'll rise up and you'll lose some of your negative pinion angle so that's why they generally tell you to put a quite a bit of negative pinion angle on leaf spring cars because once you hammer down on or load the suspension hard it's going to pull that pinion up a little bit and hopefully you will be at a more vibration less friendly angle to the output of your transmission but get back to the video or the point of the video that i started with i absolutely did not need a four inch cowl scoop i probably could have got by with a two or three inch because once you look at this thing and you <laughs> look at it from the side let me get over here excuse me let me get over here so you guys can see this that thing barely sticks out of the hood. Like if I even get down on my knees, a two inch probably would have cleared it. A two inch cow probably would have cleared it, but you'd have been real susceptible to engine rock. Like if you grabbed the engine and rocked too much, you could have had a collision at high speed. But I went over, Kansas today because I found a deal on a hood scoop. I just had to go drive and pick it up. Sure. Let's see if this is going to work. Okay. I'm trying to find my middle here. Look at that. I think it was originally purchase for a I 
think he said he was going to put on a 77 Nova, but that thing is literally made for an S10 hood. Everything about it, the length, the shape, the curvature, uh, everything about that thing fits the S10 hood. So it is a Harwood 1107 four inch cow scoop, which I would almost bet you is the part number for a S10, the, 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 would it be the first gen S10 hoods? Because it literally fits perfect. It fits perfect all the way down to the front. It has the little edge or lip on the back of it that actually hangs, you know, like hooks on the back of the hood so it can't slide off while you're test fitting it. Um, these hood scoops generally run around $163 up to, you know, 200 plus, depending on where you order them from. But I found the Harwood 1107 hood at Summit Racing Equipment for $163.95 or $99 plus a $20 special handling fee. But I just kept, I kept up my hopes that I could find something that was in my budget Lo and behold, I found a man, a really nice man, over in uh, El Dorado, Kansas. Yeah, that's a long drive from where I live, because that's two and a half hours both ways. So, But when you can buy a brand new hardwood scoop for $75, it's worth it. Especially when you got a little car that gets 26 plus miles to the gallon. I drove my happy butt over there and bought that $75 hood scoop. But... My friend Andy is gonna help me mount this thing and get it secure, and then we'll probably uh, throw some, some kind of paint on there to protect it during the uh, winter, because I'm not probably not gonna be able to paint this thing until next spring. So I uh, just wanted to let you guys see my score. You know, four inch hardwood cow scoop for the win. And it, it, every indication is it's for an S10. I don't even know if that thing would have worked properly on a Nova. Because I would almost think that a Nova hood is longer than an S10. But maybe I'm totally crazy. But anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an update on where I was at. Um, we've done, we have made a lot of progress. And I'm trying to get those, you know, get everything videoed out. Get them loaded as soon as I can. At this point, we are in danger of not getting this thing fired before I have to move. Well, I wanna make sure that I can put a hood on this thing and keep mother nature out of my new engine swap. So I was very motivated to uh, find a deal and go pick it up so I could uh, get a hood that would fit on this thing and uh, keep the weather out. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'm really excited about my hood scoop score. I'm a little bit embarrassed because we actually, I don't know, it looked to me like it was going to need a four inch cow hood. But, uh, you know, always give yourself a little extra space. It's not too big of a cow. So when you're sitting in the driver and passenger seat, it obscures your vision. Because uh, Andy's green race S10, it has a six inch lift off cow hood. It's actually a hardwood lift off six inch. It's hard to see around. I mean, I'm not saying it makes it dangerous to drive, but anything over four inches of hood scoop, you got some blind spots in the front and you need to be a, a very leery when you're driving and pay attention. So uh, that's where we're at. Uh, it's Thursday before Christmas. Uh, we've got a few things we're gonna try to wrap up, but most of my time has to go to getting things done for the move, so. Um, I appreciate you guys. Hopefully you guys have everything lined out so you can have a great Christmas and a safe New Year's. Let me throw that in. Safe New Year's. But I hope you guys uh, get to and from your holiday visiting location safe and sound. And we can run into this New Year's wide open throttle. Thank you guys for watching.